What's up everybody, this is Cobb, uh, and this video is going to be on Heroes of the Storm, namely, just going over three important factors uh, to bear in mind if you're thinking about starting up the game anytime soon. It was released earlier on this month, um, so, you know, a lot of people have been picking it up, uh, we've been seeing a lot of new players in game, I've been playing since closed beta, so yeah, I just thought it'd be a good idea, you know, to put some pointers out there. Um, because I'm sure that a lot of you guys are going to be wanting to try out the game as well. And I guess it would just be cool to share a few things that I learned uh, pretty quickly, actually. But I think it would have been nice to know them, you know, when I started out the game. I wish that somebody had told me some of these things. Um, so yeah, let's just get right into it. Alright, so the first thing to know about Heroes of the Storm, um, something that sets it apart a little bit from all of the other all the other MOBAs out there, you know, is the fact that it is so, so heavily based around objectives. Um, and what do I mean by that? What do I mean by objective gaming? You know, it's like a priority. Uh, well, it essentially means that killing things is secondary, uh, you know, it comes secondary to, well, to objectives, basically. On a lot of maps, well, on all maps, actually, um, objectives are going to spawn all around the map, you know, maybe you have to gather coins and turn them in somewhere, or maybe you have to gather resources up until you, you build 100 of a certain resource or something and it spawns a fucking big mongoloid to push the enemy base for you and stuff like that, you know? Also, mercenary camps in the jungle. Uh, once you capture those, they that basically spawns a group of OP minions that are going to push the nearest lane for you. Uh, and that really, really helps you take the game as well. Um, so basically, you can be capturing mercenary camps. You can be doing, you know, map-specific objectives. And, and if you want to win the game, uh, you're basically going to have to do these before anything else. Um, if you're just going to be trying to kill enemy players, that is not going to win you the game. Killing enemy players is good. Uh, it can get you, you know... A momentary surge in experience, it can get your team slightly ahead on XP, uh, keep your team slightly stronger than theirs. But very, very rarely is just camping, you know, in one lane, ganking some poor fool. That's generally not going to win you the game, especially if you're not showing up to team fights, if you're not showing up to objectives, if you're not taking jungle camps. Uh, you're, you're basically not going to win the game. And at the end of the day, you just got to bear in mind that, well, that even if your team is extremely far behind on kills, um, you can still quite easily win the game if the enemy team isn't prioritizing objectives properly. At the end of the day, it comes down to whoever kills the enemy team's core first, not who is highest on kills. Uh, as soon as I started prioritizing, you know, taking mercenary camps in the jungle, um, showing up to objectives all the time, uh, really just prioritizing everything I could see on the minimap showing up as something that could be captured or used in some way, a resource that could be gathered. Um, I started winning more games. So that is thing to bear in mind number one, objective gaming guys at all times. The second thing that you need to bear in mind when playing Heroes of the Storm is that, again, I think a little bit unlike uh, other popular MOBAs, you literally should never ever just stop playing or just AFK in the fountain or, or give up, you know what I mean? The rubber band effect in HUTs, it is actually more extreme than anything I've experienced um, in any of the mobile myself. If the enemy team is level 17 and your team is level 13 even, uh, you've got to take into account that if your team and the enemy team collides over an objective and you happen to take, you know, a two for two trade, you lose two of your players, you kill off two of theirs in the process, the enemy team might gain something like 20% of a level up, but your team will actually get like a level up and a half or something like that, you know, because you're so far behind. Their higher level actually makes killing them a lot more valuable to you. Uh, so catching up is actually extremely easy in Heroes of the Storm. A lot of the time you're going to see, you know, a team that gets ahead just get carried away and just start focusing on kills, for example. They'll just camp out in your base and just keep on killing you and keep on killing you, which is fine because you're just resing up your fountain. Next thing you know, you're running out of your base after dying for the third time. You eventually team wipe them. Then they're like, oh, fuck. Suddenly, you know, you're the same level as them um, because you've got so much experience from killing them because they were ahead when you killed them. Blah, 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 blah. But the rubber band effect is real though. The further ahead the enemy team is, the more you gain from taking a kill is basically what I'm saying. Likewise, just a little side note to that as well. The worst thing you can do when you're ahead and winning a game, I don't care if the game is, you know, you're 15 minutes in, you are 20 and, and 1 on kills ahead. You know, you're absolutely dominating them in everywhere. The worst thing you can ever do is just say to yourself and your team, we fucking won, boys. That is literally the worst thing that you can do. Because as soon as you say that, um, you start being complacent, you start focusing on kills. Um, instead of pulling back to take your mercenary camps, you know, from your own side of the jungle, you're overextending, you're trying to gank people. Next thing you know, one of your guys gets ganked. He's got a 60 second res timer. Um, it ha he happens to be the biggest damage dealer in your team. And then for those 60 seconds, suddenly you can't fight anymore, and the enemy team swoops in and takes all of your mercenary camps in your jungle, 
uh, and you're on the back foot all over again. It really doesn't matter how far ahead you are or, you know, how far behind you are in a way. Just objective gaming. So that's tip one, objective gaming. Um, tip two, never give up, boys. And the third thing that you should do when playing Heroes of the Storm is try not to, well, okay, this is, this is more a tip for if you're thinking about trying out the game. Don't watch videos of the game and try and compare it to League of Legends or Dota 2 or Horn, if anybody even still plays that game. Because honestly, one, once you try out the game, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. Because people ask me all the time, uh, do, I, do I prefer playing Heroes of the Storm over League and over Dota 2? And it's always so, so hard to answer because once you've played the game, you'll get it. They both feel so, so different. Uh, well, the combat in Heroes of the Storm is actually more similar to League than Dota. Dota's combat is very one-shotty and very bursty. Uh, you know, team fights are more based around like huge wombo combos that just one shot everybody. Heroes of the Storm, it's a little bit more slow paced. Uh, you can only really one shot somebody if you combine all of your damage with like two or three other people. You very, very rarely find yourself one shotting people on your own. But all in all, though, the fact that every map is different, uh, every map has different objectives, every map has, you know, a different assortment of mercenary camps to take, the fact that there's no gold or items, the fact that you customize your character through talent builds rather than itemization. They, they just feel like completely different games. When you say MOBA, you think of three lanes, last hitting, junglers, carries, uh, that kind of stuff. In Heroes of the Storm, you throw most of that stuff out the window and, you know, introduce mercenary camps, objectives, and, you know, team-wide experience gain. Uh, so it is very, very different. Don't go into the game and expect, you know, to be blown away by this better than Dota experience or better than League experience. Because the fact of the matter is they're both very, very different flavors anyway. Uh, they can both be enjoyed as their own separate thing. And that is about that, guys. Uh, three easy mode tips. Not really gameplay oriented. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video and like this video, uh, I would love to upload, you know, Gameplay, commentary, that kind of stuff. As I said, game game's released right now. You can just download it on your Battle.net launcher, as far as I know. Maybe you have to go into your Battle.net account or something. I don't know. But I hope that you guys are all enjoying the game. Uh, for those of you who haven't actually tried it yet, I hope that you try it out. But yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope that some of these tips or ideas help out, uh, you know, if you're new to the game and just dipping your toes in the water. Thanks again, everybody. And I'll catch you all just a little bit later.